Slovakia won, Ukraine two. Hey, Ukraine are off the mark. Finally, they get their first points in Euro 2024 after going down to Slovakia, who got an early lead. Is it was it really early? Yeah, it was kind of early. Got an early lead through Schranz. Credit to Slovakia. They started the game off really, really well. Uh, before we start, actually, revolution shall be televised. All my Kenyan uh, people, something amazing is happening. Don't sleep. Um, yeah, so Ukraine went... Uh, they started the game off really slow and Slovakia just really capitalized on it. It's like they, the confidence they had from the game after beating Belgium in the first game, they really, really went hard at Ukraine. Ukraine looked really shaky at the back. Um, Zinchenko, that ball over the top at the, at the far post was causing problems for them and Zinchenko in particular. Um, and Slovakia, I just want to check the lineup. There was, uh, who was it? It was Schranz, yeah. Schranz was the one who was just getting in very interesting position. He's the right winger. The first goal came in the 17th minute. Um, again, Schranz, second goal of the tournament. Shout out to Schranz. Um, it was amazing work on the wing. This is by the byline. If you look at the assist, I can't remember who assisted the goal. But if you look at the assist, it was like the guy was literally falling down. And then as he's falling down, he just volleys it across. It was a uh, very accurate volley, by the way, which rarely happens, especially when you're falling down. Uh, it managed to get to Schranz, who finished at the far post to make a uh, headed it, headed, headed at the far post, but across goal. It had just rained. It has just rained um, in the stadium, so it was quite wet. The goalkeeper was having a hard time in goal. And yeah, when it's wet, I mean, that's what you do. You are taught from a young age. I feel like that in as much as football has changed, there's some things that still stay the same. Shoot at the goalkeeper. And if you're going to shoot, shoot low because they have trouble getting down there. And if it squirms down because it's wet, um, even better for you, you know. So yeah, Shranz did really well. I believe like in the first half, they were just, they were they just, Ukraine just didn't have a, an, an answer for Slovakia. The one outlet that they had that was, I felt like they really utilized in the second half was Mudrik. And towards the end of the first half, it's like the coach unlocked something. He's like, okay, let's just keep Mudrik wide. And it actually worked wonders. Like, keep the boy wide. He actually is creating a lot of chances. There was one chance where he, um, no, that was in the second half. But yeah. Um, Dovbik had a chance after 30 minutes. Had lovely feet in the in the box. I feel like that's the first thing I've Dovbik. Dovbik, I've been really like talking about him so much in this entire tournament. Top scorer of La Liga. That was the first time like Dovbik has come into this tournament. That that 30 minutes where he just got the ball, quick feet, beat the defender in the D, and then shot and it was saved. I was like, yes, Dovbik is coming. He said coming alive because this Ukraine side need him. They need him. In as much as Mudrik is a threat on that wing, Jankov. Is normally a threat on the other wing, but he didn't start this game. That was it was Yamulenko who started. Um, I just believe that yeah, Dovbik is is the key to unlocking this uh, Ukraine attack. Then uh, Mudrik had a chance as well. It was a one on one. It was a great save from the Slovakian goalkeeper uh, Dubravka, who plays for Newcastle. And then um, later on, almost close to halftime, Slovakia got a chance as well. Um, the number 17, who is the number 17? Haraslin had a nice shot that the keeper saved to his left, bottom left. Again, it was raining. So that was, in the context of the game, it was a brilliant save because if that went in, that's 2-0 and Ukraine just sink. And they just know, like, two losses from two games, they were not going to come back, especially after losing the first one, three, nil, I think. Yeah, against Romania. Was it Romania? Yes, Romania. Um... So yeah, going to halftime, Slovakia leading 1-0. But then second half, to be fair, Ukraine really, really, really just came alive. They really came alive. They were hitting this team on the counter. I really want to uh, give a shout out to Mudrik. Mudrik was really good in the second half. But my one worry with that entire front line of Ukraine, Mudrik, Dovbik, and Yamolenko, is just like they're not decisive. Like they're not, especially on the counter. Th that's, that's something that you need to work on. Knowing that for Mudrik... His biggest strength is his counter-attacking, his pace and his pace on the counter. That is the one place where you are good. You should be really, really lethal at it. And I still believe like he leaves chances on the field. Like he should finish these chances. Um, yeah, Mudrik um, and those guys, they all had uh, really good chances up front, but they're just not, 
they were just not uh, finishing properly. Uh, there was one move Mudrik pulled pulled on Rekarik, the Slovakian Pekarik, the Slovakian right back. Just the ball came into him, and then he just first touch, second touch, nutmeg. He's gone. He's gone. And then he crosses for Dovbik, but the header was the cross was just a bit high, so he couldn't head it down. Um, but then three minutes later, Shaparenko. <laughs> Shaparenko, who I said in the preview that he needs to have a big game because if that midfield is 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 down, like they're not gonna play well. And uh, credit to them because they actually didn't start Stepanenko this time. Instead of having him as a part of a two, he was part of a four-three-three in midfield. I think that really really helped them, especially in the second half. Shaparenko um, again, Kuchka lose, loses the ball in the middle of the park for Slovakia. They worked so hard for them to give away a goal so sloppily was really disappointing. So yeah, it was a Mudrik break again. Um, then uh, they pa- he passed the ball to Dovbik, but he goes wide. Uh, Dovbik showed a lot of patience, really, really calm with his left foot, just caressing the ball, caressing the ball. Finally gives it to Zinchenko, who then crosses 45 straight to Shaparenko, who's chilling in, mid- in the middle of the D and actually finishes and makes it 1-1. And at that point, you could see now Ukraine just, yo, like you just see they, are, they just rose up. They started playing a bit better. They said it, well, they were playing better in the second half, but they were playing with more confidence. They were playing with the shackles off, so to speak. Um, 66 minutes, Dovbik and Shaparenko and Yamolenko went off and uh, they brought on, I want to know who they brought on because those two changes, I feel also really, um, um, actually, no, Shaparenko went off a bit earlier. It was, oh, Yamolenko. Uh, Dovbik and Yamulenko, when did they come off? In the 67th minute. So Yaremchuk and Zubkov. The reason why I really want to focus on that sub is because Yaremchuk came on and... Okay. He came on and then literally like five or six minutes after that, they had another counter. And this time it was him on the counter. And this time it was him who made the bad pass. It's a three on two. You have Mudrik on your left. He then lays off a really poor pass. Mudrik did well to actually get in control and shoot. And then it went off the bar, but just as where he was falling down. The keeper wasn't, had it covered. He kind of put his hand there and like he saw it go wide. Like, so he just left it to go wide, but he hit the post. Um, but then um, in the 80th minute, this, this is probably the one of the best goals of the tournament. So they, they had the ball in defense. Zabarni, I think is the center back plays a laser ball into the middle of the, in, into midfield, breaks the line with a laser pass, those L1X passes. Um, and then um, Shaparenko, one touch, second touch, he places, he, he has the ball in front and then he just chips it beautifully for Yarnamchuk, who until that point, I was really critical of him because he was, I believe he was wasteful, but the way he took his chance and it's in the 80th minute, like just touch, uh, sorry, uh, fast touch to cool the ball past the keeper. And it was so subtle and so precise such that the defender thought they could get to it. And when he got to it, he just tapped it in. Like he couldn't, it already crossed the line, but that's how clinical he was at that moment. And we have to give a shout out to Yaren Chuk. Yaren Chuk, that is probably one of the best goals I've seen in this tournament. There's been quite a few, but that, that one, that one was up there. And yeah, and the game, that's how the game ended 2-1. So now Ukraine... Uh, again, as we said, finally get three points. They move to second place. They move above Slovakia because they beat Slovakia, even though Slovakia have... Uh, actually, no. Slovakia have a goal difference. Yeah, Slovakia have a better goal difference, but Ukraine go ahead because of head-to-head. So Romania in top spot, and then Belgium still in last place, but they play later tomorrow? Yes, they play later tomorrow. And yeah, that is how the game ended. That is um, our first match in Group E. Now, moving on to Poland. 